Hey guys, this is Georgie bringing you another replay. This one is on Sand River against 200 IQ. And uh, this is the first replay of, you know, the new maps. And so there's obviously been some changes on there. Uh, I'm going to be trying to bring you some more content, but uh, there's not a lot of games worth uploading that I have at the moment. And so, you know, as those start to come through, I'll start uploading some more. There is a campaign that's going to be coming up in late May, so we have that to look forward to in terms of generating some, you know, Clan Wars game for you guys to watch. Now, in terms of this game, you can see, you know, one arty, V4s, some Russian mediums, some s -conks, some IS-7s, some bats. It's a lot of flex, it's a lot of mobility. Sand River is a very open map. Uh, it's very large, it's very very good for tanks that have speed, that can move around uh, and can reposition. A lot of Sand River is just about your ability to reposition and go and take you know, differing relevant parts of the map. Arty is also really prevalent on this map, it's, it's very very strong for a whole host of reasons. Um, just again part of it being that it's so open um, and that you know that makes it, you know, a very difficult to you know, find that already covered. Part of a huge part of that pick on that bat chat that kind of comes out early is Artie, you know, and, and that's just, you know, where Artie kind of comes into its own. There's not really anywhere for it to hide, and so it's able to do uh, some really good work throughout this game. Now you can see 200 IQ is kind of up on this A-line. There are a lot more suited for this engagement that's happening right here at this kind of A7 corner. There's a lot more tanks here. Um, and, you know, we're up... Rel 2 is up one tank here, but that's not a significant amount. You can see it's it's relatively ineffectual poking into these tanks here with these mediums. Uh, it's just the armor is poked in the right... pointed in the right direction. It's very, very hard to get penning or, or accurate shots on. And so it's kind of starting to slow down and stagnate. Um, 200 IQ doesn't seem to want to push this quite yet. They, they're still getting tanks into position. Uh, but Rel2 can't really do a whole lot with what control they have over here yet either. So right now it's just kind of descending into a bit of slow play, and this is again why part of the reason why Artie can be so prevalent on this map. You know, nothing doing right now except for Artie really putting some effective shots out on, on both sides. So there are some really good shots coming from Rel2 players into this kind of mid as they're getting more aggressive. They're slowly, you know, 200 IQ is slowly working their way up to this A7, A8 area. Uh, and they've gotten enough tanks up there now that Rel2 has decided to pull their medium tanks out of this location. Um, you know, there isn't really a safe place for them anymore here. Um, and if they, you know, were to be pushed by that group as it had, had mustered up there, uh, they would have uh, died rather quickly. And that's what's going to start happening here. 200 IQ has gotten enough tanks up there with enough of their HP that they're able to start getting aggressive. As you can see, it's just three mediums in this location. Four mediums, excuse me. Um, which means that, you know, 200 IQ definitely has more tanks uh, and a bit better positioning even, really. Uh, a lot of these uh, mediums have, have lost some HP as well. So the one really good play that you're seeing coming out here, though, you know, is uh, Rel2 does have these three bat chats that are swinging kind of in the south, and you know those those bat chats are, you know, taking that part of the map down here, uh, and really constricting what 200 IQ can use and own. So you can see kind of in this in this back corner, you know, in in and around their base. You know, 200 IQ has left some tanks as anchors so that, you know, Rel2 can't just take that off them for free. So these bat chats have, you know, grabbed these locations where they can start putting cross shots in if they become available uh, and making sure that, you know, 200 IQ can't take it off them. Now, 200 IQ has pushed rather successfully through this middle area, and they're kind of trapping these Rel2 medium tanks up at A9, A0. Um, they can't really leave. If they do, you know, they control now that kind of CD line area. And because they control that CD line area, there's going to be enough good consistent fire coming in and across those mediums really can't leave. Otter's just flipping around. He's the person calling this game. So he's flipping around to his tanks to kind of 
see what he can see and see, you know, what tanks have what HP and what they can be doing. Now, these mediums haven't gone down yet. You know, part of that's just because 200 IQ has lost a decent amount of HP too. They have to cross these open areas, and they are starting to do that, and they're going to start doing it a lot more effectively. But you can see most of these tanks are mid-HP, so they have to be careful about how they push this. Tank and Russian are going to start flexing out of there. They're going to try to get into a more southern location here, uh, because it's, you know... 200 IQ has really massed up their tanks and are starting to push that out. You can see, though, again, 200 IQ has lost a lot of HP there, um, and then you know, the IS-7 in the mid goes down as well. So a big part of this game is even when people are in losing positions, and this is something that is really, really important and is very infrequently performed on in competitive situations like this, um, even when you're in a losing situation, you need to get the most that you can out of your position. So this is still a relatively even game because Relti has managed to get quite a bit of damage out onto um, a lot of these tanks that had pushed to take that northern area off of Rel 2. So despite being two tanks down, there are a lot of one hits like that tank that Rel2 can start to look at picking and, and start to even this game back up. Now, another really important tank here is Russian in his 430U. Holding this area, uh, he's really safe in that area where he is now. People have to kind of commit around onto him. And because they would have to commit around onto them, he, they're exposing to this line of TDs kind of in and around Rel2's base and the heavies that are controlling the middle. You know, uh, 200 IQ is starting to feel out that southern position to see if they can't move into it, uh, but because these s in the middle also have support shots onto there, and that early game flex, or mid-game flex rather, uh, that brought those bat chats into that position means that Rel2 firmly has this in their control. Um, they can use these positions, they're not really in any danger of being killed here. There's going to be a lot of support that those s can provide to these bat chats. And, you know, these bat chats are very, very fast. If there is some large push, they can just leave. And now you've exchanged a position uh, in exchange for a lot of the enemy team's HP. Now, you know, again, Russian is a really important tank here because he's retaining a bit of control and he's getting a lot of vision control on that kind of northern area. So despite the fact that 200 IQ has really pushed in, really been aggressive, really, you know, pushed out a lot of Rel 2's tanks, you know, it's it's something that has resulted in only partial control of that part of the map thanks to that positioning. So Rel 2 can't use that map, but it can deny complete control to 200 IQ and so it prevents them from effectively using the locations that they've taken. You know, Russian has a lot of HP, he's in a reasonably safe location, and he's got lots of support, which is, means as long as he is passive enough, uh, he's not poking away his HP, uh, his friends can effectively support him. Bit of a misplay on John and the Sturve, just kind of taking a shot where he wasn't camoed up properly, he gets spotted and killed, and this game is even, and there's still a solid six minutes in this game, and right now both teams are kind of you know, unclear of, of, of what they can do um, to, to push into it. It's a bit of a stalemate. Everyone kind of has crossfires, and so what both teams are kind of doing is slowing it down, letting maybe already get a bit of damage out here uh, to see what can be done about you know, kind of dislodging some of these, these well-positioned, well-anchored tanks on both sides. So you can see from the map, though, Rel2 does have a bit more control, largely, again, in thanks to that positioning by Russian, that kind of C9 area. You know, it's retaining enough map control that Rel2 really just does have a, a couple of extra crossfires right now that 200 IQ doesn't have. Um, and so it's going to be a matter of utilizing that and, and trying to punish 200 IQ. Now that uh, T100 does go down, he's you know out there active scouting because he wants to see if he can get some light, so there already can do damage. And uh, you know at this point again, it's Rel2 has the map control, and it's just about patience, right? You know, Rel2 has an arty, 200 IQ has an arty, but you know 
Rel 2 can afford to do is having more map control, having a bit better vision control, especially now that the T100 is go down, to slow the pace of the game down, understand that they still have plenty of time to win this game, and let, you know, Artie and those crossfires work. And you see two tanks go down there in quick succession. Now, because we, you know, those two tanks are picked up, you know, Rel2 is going to start shifting to try to put some more pressure in and around 200 IQ's base. Now, you know, cap pressure is different from capping out. I have gone over this difference. Um, but the, the big point of cap pressure is to force a reaction out of an enemy team. So, you know, in this case, Rel2 is going to start positioning to put cap pressure on and then try to punish 200 IQ's tanks as they come back in to get those resets. It's about forcing tanks out of the positions that they are currently in into less favorable positions where Rel2 can effectively do more damage here. So some of Rel2's healthier tanks are starting to push up and start clear the way. Lower HP tanks are going to sit back and keep their guns in use and, and try to get damage out. And you'll see these heavy tanks now start to push in with the bats that still have HP. So these three heavies are going to go in on this s -conk, who's who is a bit isolated. And it should be a, a pick that they're able to get here. Whereas the bats are going to go in on this 907. And they do spot out the 5355, which is big. You, you always want to try to get Artie out when you can. And uh, this 5355 is going to go down here uh, to Wibs and Tank, who do a, a really good job here of working this position all game, really. Although this replay hasn't really terribly focused on what they've been doing. Um, you know, now it comes down to that cap pressure, right? So because, you know, there are these two tanks on cap, 200 IQ has to react. There are three tanks down, they don't have Artie to reset, which means, you know, Rel2 can effectively predict where these tanks are going to be going. Um, and because they know that information, they're able to set up to punish those locations, right? So this 907 is coming in, he's going to be going in to get resets, and he's going to go down really quickly. Wibs, again, not really worried about capping out, is going to go drive in uh, and try to pick up that 907. Doesn't quite manage to do it because he is clipping. And then Crack and Tank are going to stay on for cap pressure to continue to force these tanks out of the positions they're in. There's no reason for Rel2, despite the leads that they have, to make this harder on themselves, right? It makes more sense for them to sit back in easy positions and force 200 IQ into these, you know, last couple of pushes here uh, where they can put effective fire in. And this is the end of the game. You know, the V4 is going to go down here in a moment, followed by the Sturve. Uh, and this, this was a really, really good game played on, on both teams' parts. 200 IQ does a really wonderful job of sharing HP and pushing in and effectively taking control of parts of this map, and Rel2 does a really wonderful job of flexing around and taking the parts of the map they needed to effectively win this game. And that is that.